Hello, I'm Nathan Hustler. I am part of the Church of the Brethren, which is a small Christian denomination. It's called the Historic Peace Church. I grew up in the Church of the Brethren. Uh, I think a lot of my family back for a long time was part of it, though I'm not, I'm not quite sure of that. So I grew up in it. Um, when I was fairly young, though, I'd made the decision to join the church. Um, we talk a lot, our sort of slogan, our tagline that we've discerned as a way we think about our, our faith is um, continue, it's continuing the work of Jesus peacefully, simply together. Um, so when I chose to join the church, I chose to follow Jesus and be shaped in the way of Jesus. Um, so I think this, this shapes my, my identity and how I, I think about religion in the world, how I think about my faith, how I think about um, my own um, self being challenged um, by these teachings in this way. About two years ago, my wife Jen and I worked for two years in northern Nigeria with the Church of the Brethren there. Um, so we did a lot of interfaith peace building work. Um, so a lot of our work was um, with the religious other. One one really um, poignant example of this was there's a few months after we got there, there was an inter so interfaith conference on coexistence or peaceful coexistence. And at this conference, we were just there participating. Jen was um, presented a paper on trauma healing, and at some point. Um, during this conference, a uh, Muslim woman, Maimuna, um, came up to us and greeted us, and we started talking, and she quickly invited us to visit her uh, her secondary school where she taught um, in a local town. And when we were, well, sometime fairly fairly soon after, I mean, a few weeks later, we were in the town, it was called Mubi, and when we were in Mubi, we thought, oh, we'll stop by the school and see if we can find her. And um, we pulled in, and it's kind of a big dirt area beside the school, and we we got out of our car and started walking across and she spotted us from a distance and just about ran and tackled tackled Jen with a hug. Um, so it was a, it was a really um, exciting, well, not exciting, it was really meaningful to see that she became one of the most, one of the more committed members of a, a planning group that started Christians and Muslims for Peace Building Initiatives called Campy. And, um, and we found out actually soon after, soon near the end of our time that um, from a friend of a friend that she had actually been fairly suspicious of Christians um, before getting to know us. And it was really interesting to see that she invited us to her home and we went and visited her. And when my parents came to visit, she like, drove out of her way, made a pretty big trip to come see them. So it was, it was uh, I don't know if it changed anything significantly, but it was, it was a good demonstration of friendship and knowing people that you don't necessarily, you know, they didn't know you and you didn't know them um, yeah. and building those connections. Uh, I think there are two, I mean, there's many, but two things that I, I see as critical. One is from the Nigerian context, and one is from my context here in D.C., doing a lot of interfaith work. Um, in Nigeria, I, I think one thing that I, I saw as critical was that um, when you think in terms of community organizing or people you know, at the grassroots, um, religious communities are very natural, already existing communities that have a lot of very important functions of teaching, you know, forming action, um, in Nigeria, we saw um, in a couple of cases where there was going to be retaliation um, by one religious group of religious leader coming out and literally stopping like hundreds of people from coming out and retaliating after a, a big attack. Uh, so th there's a lot of pretty significant community building. Another one I, I, I've been thinking of after while working in, DC, in the DC context is as religious communities, we're not in, in some ways, we, we fun, in peace building, we function as another sort of non-governmental organization. You know, we're essentially a group of people interested in a certain issue or topic or whatever. Um, but I think there's something more significant that we we offer a more substantial, or at least the possibility of a more substantial spiritual and maybe somewhat philosophical critique of the, the systems that underlie so much of our problems. So kind of get at the cause of the cause um, and, and question what drives our market, what drives our values, how do we form those values. So I think there's, a, there's an interesting element there that's, that's not very action oriented and it's not even relational oriented, it's the ability to critique and, and challenge and, and critique ourselves, not just other people, it's not just you know, judging, but it's, it's you know, challenging ourselves to, to think what it means you know, to care for people in serious ways.
I think, again, maybe sort of two things. One would be to take very seriously the, the, the challenge of peace building. It's not just a conference. It's not just, you know, getting to sign a good paper, though those things are important. Uh, but also maybe more, again, more significantly, challenge people who are at the top to not take advantage of that and also to recognize that the that the work that they do is not for the purpose of gaining power or maintaining influence. I, mean, I think it's especially the case for North American, maybe European contexts where we feel our our religious influence is diminishing or whatever, you know, at least in some some strains of Christianity, we have this sort of like, why are we, you know, why are numbers shrinking? And we have this anxiety of, you know, we need to retain our influence or our power. So not being concerned about doing the things that maintain power and whether individually or, you know, um, as individual bodies, um, but to prioritize um, working for peace of all in a way that doesn't, doesn't hold kind of put, yeah, it doesn't hold the status quo, doesn't hold people down, doesn't uh, enforce patterns of power and exploitation that we see in our, in our world.